Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of the, his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. They were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the word of the Lord. Happy are they who hear these words, believe them, and obey them. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, speak to us today life-changing words that will cause an effective change in our lives that we may find more peace, more strength, and more vision for our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. This is my Son, my Chosen. Listen to Him. The title of my message this morning is Listen for a Change. No, you didn't hear that right. Listen for a change. I'll, I'll slow it down. Being as we're moving into contemplative prayer and meditation, listen for a change. Not listen for a change. Listen for a change. It's hard to hear when you're talking. We live in a culture of obsessive babbling. It's on the media. It's everywhere. It's like we have this obsession, and even, unfortunately, some people promote this idea, I need to be heard, I need a voice. And unfortunately, we've become obsessed with being heard, and we never have any time to listen. Our insecurity tells us we need to be heard. Babies babble. Mature parents listen to care for. Uh, as we mature, as we get older, we should be quick to listen and slower to speak. St. James says in James 1, 16, he says, Beloved, I urge you in this, be slow, be quick to listen and be slow to speak because everybody has an opinion and most of those opinions are based out of things in the past that have wounded them. Listen for a change. Listen beyond what's behind us and start to move forward. Are you all here? Tell, tell somebody next to you, listen for a change. Now, that's not a rebuke. That's an encouragement for change. <laughs> because we think we're going to change if we keep regurgitating our experience over and over. We have been told if you talk it out, it'll get better. But all you do is what you give voice to, you give power to. You magnify what you give voice to. And so we're on the mountain of transfiguration or transformation, which uh, transfiguration means change of form or metamorphosis. Yet Jesus does not change into something he was not before. And the disciples are not simply spectators, but they're participants in this event. St. Gregory of Palma says, Jesus did not become what he was not already, but appeared to the disciples as he was, opening their eyes, giving sight to those who were blind. 
this story is not only about a transfiguration of Christ, but also the transformation, the transfiguration of the disciples themselves. The transfiguration shows us the archetypal beauty of our own image. We're created in the image and likeness of God. They were looking at what they look like. <laughs> they were looking at this shining light, this bright face, this glory. And that's why as Christians, what we should see Christ in each other. If any man in be in Christ, he's no longer what he was. He becomes a new creation. And behold, we no longer recognize any man after the flesh, but all men after the spirit. And so they're looking at what they look like in the eyes of God. Are you here? The glorified Christ is the model and prototype of who we are and who we are becoming. The transfiguration reveals our origin, our telos in Greek, which is our completion or our fullness. Everybody say completion and fullness. I love aging. I don't despise it. I'm getting closer to my telos. I'm getting closer to who I'm supposed to be. I'm learning to be peaceful. I don't have to talk all the time. I want to start to listen so that I can change. Like the disciples, we are not simply spectators. We too participate. So how does that happen? When was the last time you experienced transfiguration of yourself or another person? Often our reading of this story focuses on the external things, the change of his appearance in his face, the clothes becoming dazzling white, the appearance of Moses and Elijah, the glory of Christ, the overshadowing cloud, because we tend to be obsessive with what we see. And unfortunately, during the prophetic movement, everybody thought they were a prophet. <laughs> I love the scripture. They, they thought they had insight on everybody else, but never listened for a change. And I'm not against prophecy. I'm for it. I believe we have prophets today. I believe all the gifts of the Spirit are operating in the church today. I don't believe that there was an amen to the book of Acts. I think the book of Acts continues to exist. And we need to walk in the fullness of the Spirit. But we have to walk as mature. So we have to listen for a change. That's why we've embraced Alex coming up and instructing us in meditation. I would advise every person here, try it for 30 days every day. Try Start with 12 minutes a day or five minutes a day. Start with something. Put your feet flat on the ground. Connect with what you're created from. Open your chest. Let a string pull your forehead up. Put a smile on your face and start to listen. Listen to the water. Listen to things outside of what you just see. These things that they saw were central to transfiguration, but we sometimes em emphasize the light of transfiguration to the voice of transfiguration. The voice of transfiguration was more powerful than the vision of it. We are looking, but are we listening? We are looking, but are we listening? Listen is the only thing the disciples are told throughout this whole event. The only thing they were told to do was listen. Stop talking. Stop getting a plan on how you're going to build a temple for, you know, this, this glorified thing. And just listen. Listening is central to transfiguration. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Luke records no words or teaching from Jesus during this event. Jesus is silent, yet the voice is saying, listen, listen to what is silent. Jesus doesn't give any instructions, any teachings. The voice is saying, quit talking about what you're going to do and listen. Well, you all are quiet today. So transfiguration must be more than words, instructions, and lessons. Listening is always beyond that. The need to be heard, to have a voice is not a spiritual goal. I said the need to be heard to have a voice is no longer the spiritual goal when you're in transformation. I'll say it one more time. The need to be heard and to have a voice is not necessary during transformation. It's necessary during justification. This can become the root source of most conflicts. 
Most conflicts are rooted in the need to be heard. I watch people on TV and I have to shut it off because they talk over each other simultaneously and the monitor's yelling at them and it's going nowhere. It's fu- foolishness and it's immaturity. Notice how children and babes need to be heard. Except for in our meditation time, you don't hear a peep out of them. Isn't that amazing? During those five minutes that we're quiet, the children are completely quiet. And I'll tell you this, of all the churches, well, I've been pastoring for 30 years, this church, this is the quietest, most well-behaved children in a sacred space. We need to thank God for our kids because when it comes time for them to come in a sacred space, they are awesome. True listening, true listening is an interior quality, a way of being. I'm trying to give instructions for us to go out and live Monday, like Father said, and not patch and pray like Alex said. <laughs> a way of being. It is more about the heart than the ears or the tongue. It is more about silence than words, is what I'm saying. Ultimately, listening is about presence. It's hard to be present if you're not listening. The honor of your presence is requested. Turn to two people and say, the honor of your presence is requested. You know, you know what I would say? If you have something you want to share with someone you love, why don't you start with that? The honor of your presence is requested. May, may we talk? going over the line again (laughs) the honor of your presence is requested we are a babbling generation and the word babbling has the root word babe we talk too much and listen too little and don't go home and tell your spouse you need to listen to me you heard bishops Don't go up and say, now Bishop Bishop said you need to listen to me. You go home and you say, as a mature person, I'm going to start listening rather than telling others to listen to me. And everybody said, it's just a suggestion, beloved. It's just a suggestion. You know, when Father was talking about the dedicated day, Facebook is revealing the true nature of people. There's stuff you'll do on Facebook you won't do here. Young people, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the older folks because I'm not on it. I don't want to be a part of it. But you'll drop s- certain words and make certain actions you'd never come up here and do. Thinking that that is good. Now, I'm not going to rebuke you because it's not my job to police your morals. It's not my job to police what you put in your body, how much you put in your body, and when you put it in your body. We're not a church who walks around judging people. I enjoy a nice glass of wine with the best of them. (laughs) All right? I'm not here. You're you're not defined by that. You're defined by your ability to restrain and control yourself in moderation. But young people, this obsessive need to be popular by doing crazy things in a public forum is going to come back and bite you someday when you need a job. Now, I'm just giving you an old man's wisdom. I'm 65 years old. I'm going to love you if you go completely crazy. But I'm not going to be able to help you get what you need if we don't start listening. Can I get an amen? True listening is an interior quality, a way of being. Ultimately, listening is about presence. The disciples are being told to be present, be open, be receptive. For years, I used to preach, and I could feel people judging what I was preaching. They weren't present. They were evaluating. Well, can I trust what this guy is saying? No, you can't trust what I'm saying, but you can trust what the Holy Ghost is doing with my words by the time it gets to your ears, if you're present. <laughs> Amen? we got to believe that God, God always helps, has our back if our heart is right. Say that with me. God's got my back as long as my heart is right. Amen. He is, all, he, wa- he is telling them, be present, be open, be receptive to the one who is always present to you. Let me say this about our Lord. He's always present to you no matter what you're going to. Say that with me. The Lord is always present to me. Now we need to reciprocate that presence. 
I mean, I can give you all kinds of four steps to a happy marriage, five steps to prosperity. The church has tried to become so secularly motivated that we don't train people to be disciples. This is discipleship training. Amen. Listening creates an opening through which the transfigured Christ enters and transforms us. Did you hear what I said? Listening becomes the doorway by which he enters to transform us. I can tell you after we started, uh, the men started pursuing meditation after our trip to Ghost Ranch. I committed myself to daily meditation and many others have yes, uh, recently. And I start to notice changes in me and my brothers that I, I didn't think could ever happen. A new peace. You know, a new patience with p some people. <laughs> <laughs> listening asks <laughs> listening ask us of, of us something. It asks intention, attention, and letting go of things that deafen us. Anything that destroys or limits our presence is a form of deafness. Anything that limits our presence or willingness to listen is a form of deafness. Therefore, Let's talk about a few of those things, and then I'll close. And I'm really working hard on 20-minute homilies. I think I'm doing pretty good today. Amen. Because with all the other wisdom going here, we all have to have many voices speak to us. Holding on to the past, guilt, sins, and regrets will create deafness in your ability to be present. Holding on to the past will deafen you from present moment. Guilt... There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Your past sins and regrets will deafen you to the presence of the one who is always present. Can I get an amen? Holding on to disappointments, sorrow, and losses will deafen you to the presence. Disappointments, sorrows, and losses. Stop grieving what you lost so you can be present. And only meditation can heal a wounded soul. Only meditation can heal a wounded soul. You can get advice from all kinds of people, pay a counselor $120-some an hour. I'm not against that. But until you're willing to go internally, that, that, that wound cannot be healed. Perfectionism, self-doubt, and self-hatred will deafen you to presence. Everybody say perfectionism. A perfectionist can never feel present because they're evaluating how perfect everything is, or isn't, for that matter. Well, I don't know if I can embrace that. It just don't seem right to me. Perfectionism, self-doubt, and self-hatred. Dave Flores told me something yesterday. It sounds so strange because we preach on getting out of being self-centered. But he said, Bishop, we do not need to be self-centered. We need to be self-centered. <laughs> Same words, different meanings. One is self-centered, it's all about me. One is I'm centered in myself so that I can be corporately connected. You'll never be committed till you're connected. You have to be co committed if you are going to be connected. And I'm finishing now. Competition, comparison, and expectation will deafen you to the presence. Judgments will deafen us to the presence and lastly anger resentment and condemnation will deafen us i want to say something about the one who's always present to us he's not looking for a reason to punish you he's looking for a reason to restore you our god is not sitting on a bench with a big gavel waiting to sentence us he died once and for all amen whatever it is listening to god Listening to our spouses, everybody say amen. Say, I'm praying for you, Bishop. Our friends, our children, our co-workers, the poor, the needy, strangers, our enemies. Listening will become some of the most difficult work we will do. Say this with me. Listening is difficult work because I'm already giving conjuring up my response before I listen to what's being said. And that's birthed out of insecurity. 
Not insecurity as a person, insecurity in God. You're not in that much control. Life is hard. Amen? Listening is our spiritual practice. Stand to your feet with me this morning and let's pray. Thank you for being present today. My prayer is that the things that were birthed of God will penetrate your heart and the things that are from Paul's shell will fall to the ground and die. I would never try to share with you something I didn't think wouldn't benefit your home, your family, and your personal life. That is my commitment in the years I have left doing what God has called me to do. Listening is our spiritual practice. Let's all say it together. Listening is our spiritual practice. Listening is evidence of being present. Listening is evidence of being present. Listening is the fruit of spiritual maturity. It opens us to healing. It opens us to reconciliation and union. Ultimately, listening takes us back to the Mount of Transfiguration. And as St. James said, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For some reason, the apostle tied anger to not listening. Most of us are angry because we're not heard. The bottom line is we're angry because we're not willing to listen. And we jump to conclusions that are contaminated by those things I mentioned that deafen us. Father, right now, help us, Lord. We stand here in an imperfect world, flawed and broken, but yet your sons and daughters, going from faith to faith, glory to glory, grace to grace. Holy Spirit, come and instruct us and help us to listen for your glory. That we may truly be light shining in a dark world. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us profess our faith in Almighty God. We believe in one God.